Yo, 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 what's really good? Bozos, bullies, buffoons, babies, brothers. How we doing? Broadcast boys are back with another podcast. We here. Lot to talk about. If your name's Dylan Brooks, fuck out my face. It's time to break down the villain origin story of the NBA's biggest pest, who somehow, against all odds, hails from Canada. He's got to be the meanest guy to come out of Canada in the history, right? I'm sure there's some far worse people. There has to be a Canadian serial killer, multiple. Yeah. The NBA is so physical right now, it's damn near erotic. Erotic or erratic? Erotic. Do we know why Dylan Brooks made a pass at the King's Royal Scepter? That was far from Dylan Brooks' first incident around the nether regions, though. Let's oh, really? break down what he's been up to since he was a duck at Oregon. Oh, so he's a, he's a frequent visitor to Below the yes, Belt. Yes, he's a Hall of Fame menace to society. In Savannah better eyes. watch out. So at Oregon, he got a stern talking to from Coach K after running up the score once the shot clock had expired. In the handshake lines after the game, Coach K took him to the side and let him know the business. But, but did he show respect? Dylan Brooks showed respect then, but to me, that's more of a corny move on Coach K's part. Get your team to win. You don't got to worry about all that. Disrespecting yeah. a bona fide program in Eugene, I mean, Oregon. He, he's running up the score. I mean, again, that's the type of thing that I don't care about unless it happens to me. So I feel Coach K. But at the same time, let the kids play. The NBA players present themselves as so hard body, but when they break that unwritten rule, I've never seen anyone more upset in my yeah, life. Yeah. Remember when the Raptors were yelling at uh, Lance? Lance Stevenson? Yeah. DeMar DeRozan and P.J. Tucker both <laughs> cornered them in the middle of the court. That I swear hilarious. there are far worse things done to these players on a regular basis, but to care about that shows they're sportsmen of the highest order. Yeah, I mean, you got to be professional to make it to that level, and part of prof professionalism is uh, knowing the unwritten rules. And respect. Exactly. Before LeBron, I guess a few weeks ago, toward the end of the season, he punched Donovan Mitchell in the groin, too, after missing a layup. Brooks you know? did? Yeah. I did not know that. Caused a major kerfluffle. So this is not a first-time offense by the brother. Really? He just wanted to be Draymond Green so bad. Okay. Before Donovan Mitchell, he was on his Dennis Rodman bullshit and shoved a cameraman. Cameraman? What did they do? They got, that's the most thankless job in the NBA. His and they're putting themselves in danger. They got these huge men running at them at full speed. There's got to be, we, got, we need a list of like cameraman injuries over the years. We need a list of injuries caused by cameramen because their seating position is absolutely ridiculous. At least multiple times a game, they almost roll their ankle on these stupid cameramen. Can't you have a fucking button from the crowd and just press the button to take the photo at the final four? I saw a million apparatuses just like that. That's what separates all the other leagues from the NBA. We get in the action, even though NFL gets way closer. <laughs> yeah, NFL, they're literally on the field with the sky cam. Yeah, that's true. Every sport gets in the action. I don't know why you got to put the players at risk. It's just like a lose, lose, lose situation. But for the angles, because without that cameraman, we wouldn't have that LeBron D. Wade alley oop photo. Iconic. Okay, fair enough. Could have been taken by a camera phone in the middle of the game from the court side, but that's okay. Wouldn't know. have Miami been as high quality. Are too lit to be down there. They were in Milwaukee. The photos. They were in Milwaukee, bro. Oh, they were? Yeah. Well, Cream City, they lit off the beer, too. Beer and cheese. People already forget this incident where Steve Kerr was mad, said he broke the code. Uh -oh. Last year, he hit Gary Payton, too, with a dirty play. It caused him to break his elbow. Yeah, so Steve Kerr definitely handled that the best way possible because, especially losing someone like GP2, um, who's probably a favorite in that locker room, probably just pissed him off. And then what happened? He bounced back with authority. They won the title, so thank you, Dylan Brooks, for letting the Warriors take it personally. <laughs> this is very recently after game two. He said LeBron was old, and he doesn't respect anyone until they give him 40. This doesn't make any sense to me. It's not that easy to drop 40 in a game. What if he gives you 35, 38, 39? You're not going to respect them then? Bro, if they beat you, show them respect. What are you, stupid? You're going to take an L, but, oh, he didn't score 40, so you know what? I actually don't even take any personal disrespect yeah, what to is that. the arbitrary number of 40? This is like if you and I played FIFA. It's like, oh, you beat me by six? <laughs> I only respect you if you win by seven. Also, is he... Too stupid to know that LeBron has given players far better than him 40 and 50 before multiple times in his career. It's also clearly uh, too unintelligent to realize if LeBron wanted to, he could do that with the snap of a finger. That's he not conducive feel like to winning yeah, basketball exactly. in L.A. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Dylan Brooks is just a kind of a bozo to me. And I say this all the time because I don't want it to ever be forgotten. If you make it to the NBA, you've done a lot of good things in your life and you've done a lot right. Kudos to you. But he got there, and he's just acting like a fucking bozo. Sorry, break. Like show respect to the people who who paved the way and been there for years and doing this thing. On the court, talk your shit. Don't get me wrong. But don't be an asshole in the locker room. Just 
It's like the clearest case of clout chasing the NBA has ever seen. And please do not ever pull up with the thinning pop smoke braids again. As a Canadian, <laughs> that is very disrespectful to us Brooklynites, even though I'm not from Brooklyn, because true Brooklynites don't care about Dylan Brooks. So I gave it away right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually from Soho. I'm not from Brooklyn, so I don't claim it. Breaking news unrelated to this, our friend just got his PS5. He will be joining us tonight with the Pink House team. Oh, that's amazing. Great news. <laughs> Sorry, back to business. Yeah. So after Dylan Brooks disrespected the shit out of LeBron, I wish you lip read this. I'm pretty sure LeBron went up to him and said, damn right, I'm old. I'm going to make you eat your words, young buck. That's what I read, <laughs> That's what I read on Reddit as the gist of what he was saying, like from, from a professional lip reader. I watched a, I watched a TikTok uh, that said something completely different. What did it say? It, was that a funny TikTok, though? Like a I don't funny know. lip reading? I don't know, because I just watched it, and I thought it might have been Can you right. repeat it or no? You yeah. Like, okay, go ahead. It was basically saying, just like, you're doing a lot of nothing out there, just running around and talking. He was like, hit your shots, play your role. You're not ready for me. Oh, that's it? Yeah. It's very respectful. Very respectful, but also very, like, sounds like something LeBron would say. And that's all he really needs to say. Because my favorite thing that LeBron said in the media recently was when they asked him, do you feel like you sent a message to Dylan Brooks and the Grizzlies? And LeBron was like, I, I have no need to send messages. He's LeBron James. You fucking dumb. I mean, there's a long history of the media asking incredibly stupid questions, including from me. <laughs> that's a fact. For example. A very disrespectful question. Actually. For example, Chris Paul going to game six, down 3-2, and them asking, is this a must win? <laughs> like, do you, or do you expect to come home after game six? He's like, what do you want from me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, do you, what do you want me to say? So after... And the media is stupid, though. We know that. After Dylan disrespected him, he smacked LeBron's magic stick in game three after the Lakers jumped out to a 35-9 to first quarter lead. That's how you respond. You don't need 40 points. That is way more getting put on notice. 35-9? Yeah. to Y'all supposed smoke. to be kings of the West? They're getting smoked. John Moran said the Grizzlies was good in the West. They're currently down 2-1 to a seven seed. So, like, how good are you? I think Dylan Brooks is talking about the playoffs because I think John Moran is shaking off what happened this year with him. So he's kind of like, even though he played amazing last game, but Dylan Brooks is talking about the playoffs and LeBron and his Lakers, bro, they're clicking at the right time. After that trade, they're one of the better teams in the NBA. One word, four syllables. Hachimura. <laughs> yeah, he really is a difference maker. Him and uh, Vanderbilt. And do not forget the coldest white boy. In the league currently, I don't think this can be contested, can it? Is Austin Reeves right better now? than Right now? I do think right now, somehow, Austin Reeves is better than Tyler Hero. Right now, yeah. He's causing more of a story. Tyler Hero got a broke hand, and he ain't doing shit in the playoffs. Austin and Reeves I is think nice, that bro. Austin Reeves got a, a bit more. And people say it about Tyler Hero, but I think that Austin Reeves got a bit more of a dog in him. 100%. Like he really out there, like, being disrespectful and taking buckets. On the court, yeah. Tyler Hero off the court is as cool as it gets. Yeah, no, nah, he's cool, <laughs> for sure. That's not what you need. Right, but I'm just time. saying, like, on court, as a basketball player, I think Austin is a bit tougher. Oh, definitely. Hey, but Tyler Hero more polished. More polished, but when you're more coddled polished, by John Calipari, the coach of the Dominican Republic at Kentucky, <laughs> you're going to be spoiled for the rest of your NBA career. Well, he Unless spoiled. He ain't spoiled right now. He got Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra. Unless you're De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk. Those are the only Kentucky brothers I respect. Mm. I really, really do love the Kings. I hope they can pull it off, but it's going to be a very, very tough test. De'Aaron Fox broke his finger. He's doubtful for game five. Really? Right or left, though? He said he's doubtful, so it's probably a shooting hand. Nah, that's all a ruse, a deception. Maybe. That would be nice. Don't ever doubt. I want to see it go seven, but I want to see the Warriors win. It's one of Kings those... will have their time. They're the team of the future. Right now, I want to see the Warriors make a play. It's one of those situations where, in the moment, I want to root for the underdog because that's just the type of guy I am. Real right. stand up. Right, right. <laughs> but stand up individual. Everybody. But says after that. the fact, I'd probably be tight to not see the Warriors face whoever yeah. they're going to be facing off with in the next who? round, which is who? Uh, who would they would be? Would it be the Suns? No, I think they're, they're uh, collision course in the Western Conference Finals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then if, if it's not the Suns, then the Kings can win. That's fine with me. Nah, because I want to see them get to the Western Conference Finals to play the Suns. To play Who KD doesn't want to see Steph Curry go deep into the playoffs? He's the most exciting player in basketball to watch. Uh, hello, Julius Randle from the bench? That's my <laughs> type of guy. Let's get back to these antics, though. Yeah, we'll get there. So regarding Klay Thompson, yeah. speaking of the Warriors, Dylan Brooks told the media that he owns a lot of real estate in San Francisco. First of all, that is the most expensive real estate market in the United States. So I highly doubt that because you're competing with Silicon Valley CEOs and bros. Yeah. So it ain't you. Yeah, you're yeah. not Google. You're not Larry Page. Dylan Brooks has no real estate in, in, in Golden State. They're not sweating Stone Cold Steve Austin with the pot smoke braids. He also tried to exchange jerseys with Kyrie Irving post game and got duped, pump faked, bamboozled. <laughs> it was his demise. That's the best thing Kyrie's done in like four years. 
I don't even know if it was intentional. I hope it was because I get a lot more respect no, for the brother. No, he said it. He, he he addressed it. He said he was just like, oh, you, oh, I didn't I didn't notice. I'll get it. From, maybe I'll get it from him next time. All right, so that sounds intentional. Exactly. That's my point. He didn't want his fucking jersey. What does he want a Dylan Brooks jersey? Fourth man on on his team on the team. I mean, what, why would he need his jersey? Kyrie's an uh, all time talent. Besides trading for Kobe Bryant's jersey, what are these jersey swap guys doing with these kits? They're just putting them in the laundry or putting them in a room in the basement. Framing them, put them in there like how many? That could room. be thirty different. Just well, there's two. not that many. Well, some of them I, I'm sure get put in a draw somewhere, but like the, the NBA brothers, at D Wade, Melo, LeBron, those guys, they definitely have their jerseys. Yeah, their jerseys are all hung other. up next to each other, banana bow style. I'm trying to get that Rolo Cavs jersey swapped and hung and framed <laughs> in my foyer. No, no, no. Listen, because he came what, in and what did damage. Here to my eye is the Lopez brothers in their final year in the NBA swapping jerseys. But Rolo will be out of here far, far before Brooke. Brooke Lopez has had 10 different careers. You know, I knew the casual losing game four when Carly and I spotted Dean Wade at the farmer's market at Union Square <laughs> on Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Disgusting. What are you doing? You don't got practice or shoot around? Y'all played horribly. Dean Wade at the farmer's market a day before a playoff game? Mm -hmm. His mind's not in it. It was the day after we streamed on Friday. That is unbelievable. Hello, you on... You're on the bench looking to get Y'all expect to win with Dean Wade focused, focused on fresh produce? And apple cider instead of working on your jump shot? Come on, man. I knew it was over. Carly said, he said, who the hell is this guy? Why he have Cavs shit? Oh, yeah, how these NBA players, you, you can't go outside without your whole team gear? I don't understand that. They want, those they the want type to be that seen? want to be seen. They, he was with his well, Maybe bro. that's all they have. <laughs> on the road? On the road. Maybe that's all they bring. Yeah, pack one outfit because you know you're going home. Yeah. Okay, next. Dylan Brooks has had a long-standing and well-known beef with Draymond Green. The two have been exchanging first-take soliloquies all season. Hmm. Like, Draymond's been addressing him for 30 minutes in his podcast, and then Dylan Brooks talks about him for two minutes post-game. But a source revealed in 2016 Dylan was interviewing the media and said the best he can do is hope he's the team's Draymond Green at Oregon. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> these dudes, they come into the NBA and they act different. He's a fucking bozo, bro. Draymond Green is ten times the ball player he'll ever be. Except maybe from behind the arc. <laughs> behind the arc is devastating. What? Ha how does that happen? Well, how does oh, someone not be able to in shoot? In 2016, Game 7, Draymond Green hit seven of eight threes. He could shoot that whole season. What happened? I have no idea. I don't know what goes into an offseason for an NBA <laughs> player, but I feel like how are you not – like, if that's such a glaring weakness in your game, especially with someone like Draymond who's good at everything, and maybe it's, he's good at everything because he works on everything but shooting. But I imagine he puts up, some, puts up some shots as well, but I just don't understand how someone can make it to that level. He was a good shooter, not even just a serviceable. He was solid that yeah, yeah. one or two seasons. Well, I mean, I think he still is. Just He just refuses to take them. And if, you don't, and if he doesn't take them as often, he's not in rhythm as much, so he's not going to make them as often. I mean, I don't know. It's all... But Draymond Green, besides what he what he does from behind the heart, yesterday there was like a, a um, he played great he, at the end of the game, right in the end of the fourth quarter. There's some of the defensive plays he was making. I'm like, he's, bro, he's invaluable. He was dominating Sabonis. Sabonis was our friend called that Sabonis was trash, and I think he might have been right. He looks very shaky out there. <laughs> ever you, since ever since Dom said something about him, I don't trust any Gonzaga players in the NBA. Just look at John Stockton. What did the brother win? Nothing. How many chances did he have? How many minutes did he play? Yeah, I don't know. But that's funny that you say that he's that he uh He would definitely expose him. Who? Draymond and Dom. <laughs> expose <laughs> a bonus. <laughs> nah, but uh it's funny that you said that Dylan Brooks said that he wants to be the Draymond Green. In 2016, he said this, of, yes. Of his team. Like, it just goes to show you how people switch up, man. Just be you. A wise person once told me to just be you. So just be you, bro. You come into the NBA and you're trying to do too much and you're talking in front of the media, and right now you're not looking, you're not looking good, and neither is your team. And if you lose to the seventh seed, I'll be it. It's LeBron and AD. If you lose to the seventh seed after talking all that shit, ain't nobody going to respect y'all. And they might even blow y'all up. I do feel like these sort of antics can extend his career. Just look at Pat Beverly. If he wasn't out here talking, making quotes, and making news, would he really have lasted this long? And yeah, maybe Jared Dudley waited too long to, to keep himself relevant. Even though he had a pretty long career, Oh, he definitely played longer than he should have and got actual minutes far longer than he should have. Yeah. When he was talking shit to Ben Simmons? <laughs> what, to the crowd? Hyping himself yeah. to the crowd? That was a great fake fight. Ben Simmons versus the Nets. Let me push him into the stands. Yeah, that was ridiculous. All right, we're still not done with Dylan Brooks, though. Damn. He called Theo Pinson, one of our close personal friends, nothing more than a cheerleader. We're talking about the five, five years in a row, teammate of the year, Theo Pinson, bench mob of the year. You wish you brought to the table what Theo Pinson brings to the table. Dylan said, I grew up with you, and 
I watched you be a great player, and now you're nothing more than a great cheerleader. It's sad. And what is he? He's a sideshow, bozo clown, just like me. He really is a trash-talking three for 13, solid defense, a few technical fouls. More than a, more, more than a few technical fouls. He led the league in technical fouls this year. I meant per game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In a game, that, that's what he's good for, which is like kind of what Draymond is good for, plus a lot of other amazing things. Draymond's guaranteed to get a technical foul and celebrate as, as if he's having the absolute time of his life. <laughs> Why does he have so much fun? I mean, because he, lo he loves the game. He loves getting ejected. He loves the game. Also, imagine playing with Steph Curry. How fun is it to play that game? Pretty easy. You don't got to do anything. Exactly. He literally just stands at people's ways, and he kicks it out from time to time. And Steph Curry just makes it rain. Him and Clay. He, Dr Draymond has the most fun job in the league. He just gets to lock people up, what he's best at, and let everybody else cook. So Theo checked him with some receipts. He said, I live rent-free in your head, throwing it back to something that Dylan already had said. With a box score, when UNC won the title, Theo Pinson and them boys beat Dylan Brooks in the Sweet 16. Well, so he showed the box score of the game. Well, there you go. He's a cheerleader now, but he busts your ass in college. And I guarantee, around the league, Theo Pinson is way more respected than you are. And... Cheerleading is one of the most, if not the most physical sport in the league. Ever seen cheer on Netflix? It's absolutely grueling. Do These your brothers, research. Will, Do your homework. They'll throw a flyer 10 feet up in the air, and literally no one will be there to catch them. Yeah. We're not done, though. He's just He invites this, though. Like he, he says all this shit, and he makes people hate him, and he invites this kind of, of, uh, of attention where people are calling him out for you know the sad truth. It's like, bro, you're not even all that. Far better than me, of course. But you're not even all that. The fact that he's Canadian really just adds insult to injury. We still got Draymond. <laughs> True. And Boogie's out the league, but he was one of the best to ever do it. I do think at their most annoying, Draymond clears Dylan Brooks by far. It's oh. not even close. Draymond is an elite, like in a league of his own. If if there are players like Draymond, irritants, you know what I mean? Like kind of controversial guys, he's in a league of his own. Dylan Brooks is bottom of the present barrel. day all right this i don't think he invited on himself but he had his teammates back and he beefed with uncle shay shay at the staples center oh yeah well i mean in in, the, in that case he's being a good teammate you know what i mean probably was was chirping a little bit too much and i don't know why you would do that because i know you're an nba player and you're pretty big yourself but shannon sharp is an absolute force to be reckoned with and i really think that he would mop the fucking floor with him it's funny that that incident is on the lower scale of things considering how random yeah. And what a pop culture crossover that was. You saw you saw quickly T. Morant wanted no smoke with, with Shannon Sharp, bro. I mean, he's one of the most physical specimens I've ever seen. You've he, seen his flashback. He's a tight photo? end, right? So he's like 6'5, six, 6'6, six, six, right? Something like that. He's like huge. You can see his throwback photo from spring break when yeah. he was in college. You did yeah, see, that? see that? Bro. Yeah, he's I mean, an he absolute looks, unit. He looks exactly the same, too. Yeah. yeah. Gib. Yeah. Last one. This one's not that controversial and it would be expected, but an old tweet resurface of Dylan Brooks idolizing LeBron. When LeBron finally won his ring, he wrote, The king, well-deserved. It's about damn time. Yeah, back in 2012, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I saw that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, re I'm saying the same thing over and over again. He clearly is doing everything that he's doing for the result that he's getting. You know what I'm saying? He's in the news. People are talking about him way more than they would normally talk about a player of his skill set and talent level. And it's because he's chirping. And he's chirping to clearly his heroes. Tweeted about LeBron. And uh, wanted to play like Draymond. And those are his two biggest uh, rivals at this point. Come on, bro. Be you. So this is a marketing move then, is what I'm hearing from you. Because an artist that I know had a very similar strategy. Takashi 69 was getting into beef with Perfect. every single prominent artist. 50 Perfect. Cent, Drake, 21 Savage, Meek Mill. And kind of distracting from the fact that his music was hot trash, but also still somehow catchy. Just like the Grizzlies, they're kind of fake nice too. That is the perfect analogy. Dylan Brooks is Takashi 6ix9ine of the NBA. Phonies, fakers, frauds. Let's go Lakers. Lake show, baby. The fucked up thing about Takashi is he has that lifeline of being Latino. Mm -hmm. And now he can just sing a song in Spanish. And people around the world don't know his story. <laughs> and no matter what, they're going to love that song. And it's going to do numbers on the charts because that population is so prolific. Yeah, I mean, it's probably, good. It's, he's, it's probably a good career play. He probably saved himself with that. Yeah, it's a great career play. Go be a popping uh, international superstar. <laughs> you see Dwight Howard? Did well the three point contest in Taiwan. I saw he, I saw he cleared a whole rack. Wow, that's what's up. Well, I mean, look, NBA players can shoot. It doesn't matter how bad they how bad they can shoot. Oh, NBA players can shoot. I was at the Brooklyn Nets game three with a lot of kerfluffle, and Nick Claxton watching him shoot a free throw was the most disgusting yeah. thing I've ever seen. Who is his coach, is and what is your excuse? 
His Jacques legs, Vaughn, what you doing? His legs are wider than his shoulders, and he's seven feet tall. Yeah, I don't How know. is that possible to hit a jump shot like that? KD left him. KD should have been working with him, but he left. How are you so good at everything else but the easiest part of the game? I know. I, I mean, <laughs> I really I stand on this because I've always said it. I really don't think that there's an excuse for missed free throws in the NBA, aside from exhaustion, because like that happens. I think that NBA players should all be above 80% from the line. Is That's, that not fair? 80% is a lot. Just 75. Because, sure. 7 out of 10 is fair. 7 out of 10, 7 and a half out of 10, just because, like, Bro, you're paid to hoop. You should start and end every workout with free throws, right? I mean, like, again, I don't know shit, but I'm saying, like, if I was a hooper, like, that is how I would set it up. Even playing pickup ball, it depends what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes being on offense is extremely tiring where I get my energy back on defense or vice versa. Just whatever's more fun yeah, at times. Huge weekend for the boys. We live streamed on Friday in a location that had very good vibes, not cursed <laughs> whatsoever, and it was proven once again that our instincts and superstitions were correct. Two special guests were in the building. Mm -hmm. Incredible time, incredible stream. The Cleveland Cavaliers scored the least points of the entire NBA season. I did not realize that. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was on Friday. Yeah, that was, a, that was a rough game to watch in the first half because the Knicks were, like, as bad on offense as they were. But then in the second half, we kind of picked it up, and we really, really locked up uh, the Cavs in the second half. So, beautiful. One by 20, that was uh, their biggest loss of the season. Really demoralized them, even though they fought a little bit in game four. Um, Knicks took care of business, bro. And I was so, yo, I don't want to, like, start yelling on here, bro, but I am very, very excited about this tip. What I love is that Julius Randle was benched if a player don't got it, as he's proven to have lost his talents each and every postseason, let's give someone else a shot. I really would love to see what Toppin can do, even if he's not going to put up the stats. I just like his energy for the team. It's positive vibes only. I tip the, I tip the cap to Tibbs for, for taking the, the risk in doing that because, you know, had, they, had we lost the game, the narrative would have been like he, he, he went away from his uh, all-star. Like, why would he do that? He literally what can't play, though. But that's not true, bro. He, he, he was hurt up until the end of the season. And then he came back for the playoffs. His first game back was a playoff game. And then he played okay. And he's just probably, like, getting his win back and he's tired. But if he can rest in this series and we can win it, we're going to need him next round if we're playing the Bucks or the Heat because they have prolific bigs. And we're going to need Julius to, to be there. I reserve the right to change my opinion, but we'll be absolutely shocked if it does change. Julius is hurt, not playing his best basketball. RJ finally starting to step up. We're going to be a scary team when we're all clicking. All I know is Isaiah Hartenstein is putting the league on notice that he's one of the up-and-coming best big men in the game. <laughs> Not a thing happens on the court that I Hart doesn't have his fingers on, even from the bench. He's the greatest Afro-German in the NBA. Absolutely. Sources say. His uh, resume, though, man, we were going down, <laughs> his resume is unbelievable. He's, he's won at every level. He's won at every level he's played at. He was the NBA G League Finals MVP. <laughs> Talk to me nice. He was a Lithuanian MVP. Come on. I couldn't really tell you all the other details, but, but there's more. He's won at every single level. Yeah, no, iHeart is a special, special talent. I mean, this started as a joke, but I really do believe in the contributions of iHeart off the bench. It's nothing major except for being the face of the league. Stephen A. Smith said Donovan Mitchell was held to two points, one of nine shooting in the second half, and that's what he liked to see. And I don't know if we can stop Donovan Mitchell from getting 50 next game. I think he'll have one more game and we'll come close to that at home so you can go see it in person as you've wanted to for years. Oh, yeah, I need that. Bro. And if they don't do that, then it shit is a wrap. Because I'm going to tell you, fans at home, if we make it to game six and it's an opportunity for closeout, right? Like, let's say Cavs take care of home court and we have to come back to New York, I will be in the garden. And if Miami can miraculously hold on with the addition of Kevin Love and them boys Salt and Pepper in the building, Imagine if it's a Knicks-Miami throwback series, and for once we finally outclass them with more talent. Heat or Bucks, both teams banged up. If we can get past them and, and play against a banged up Bucks without Giannis or a banged up Heat without Hero, I mean, who, I think we could beat the Heat. No problem. Not no problem. I think we could beat the Heat. The Bucks, it'll be it'll be tough. But if they're both hurt, bro, can we make it to the Easter Conference Finals against the Celtics? That shit would be electric. More possible than haters thought it was at the beginning of the postseason. I'm saying. Not much to do with the Knicks play. In fact, they've made me a, a little less confident than I was. Oh, yeah. Not that much more, but I'm more confident because of the injuries. Nah, bro, but playoff basketball is about grinding out wins, and that's exactly what we've done. All three wins, grinded what, them out. What does really scare me about Miami, if it's not iHeart as the face of the league, it <laughs> could be Duncan Robinson <laughs> coming into his own. Finally getting some minutes and showing them why he signed that contract. I have the brother's number in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, a nice flex. 
he might cause some destruction. Richard Jefferson is in my phone. Just saying. What homegrown town do the Knicks have on this squad? RJ. RJ. Quickly. Grimes. Toppin. Uh, Deuce. Uh, I don't think that's it. So that's showing the importance of the draft, correct? Yeah. Oh, Mitchie. And Mitch. And Mitch. That's six solid role players, rotation players, that have been acquired through the draft, which just goes to show you how important scouting, analysis. Absolutely. And your front office can be. Thank you, Leon Rose. Worldwide West.